previous episode, we discussed checklists, site surveys, and site vetting. This is a reminder that for examples on site surveys, please visit our link in the description below. In this episode, we will discuss flying your drone, setting up your launch site, and the usage of the checklist. If you would like to hear more on any of these topics, please visit www.sugudrones.com and click Ground Brief, or give us a call at one 888 sugu So now, when you're about to begin your operations and we're choosing the best possible takeoff and landing site, a number of things have to be considered uh, once you're at the site and looking around. You have tall buildings, mechanical turbulence, you get wind tunneling. Um, look around in your area for obstacles that maybe you didn't recognize when you did your uh, satellite based image site survey. Um, you're going to want to note the wind direction so you have a nice takeoff and landing into the wind. If you have a wind anemometer, you can use that to help identify. Or here at the airport today, I can see a windsock. You might have to move around buildings or identify uh, things that are causing interference. One of the most important thing is, especially in a site with uneven terrain, is try to choose the highest elevation position if you can um, to take off and land from. That'll also help you. Um, and of course, thinking about the security at the site and how um, it's always the people you didn't plan on being there that where they might come from, how are you going to control um, them coming onto the site. Have you chosen a spot that this all works out with? And finally, um, if you have visual observers, certainly an operation like this would be highly recommended. Have some extra people. Um, where are they going to be positioned? They can help with both security and visual observers. So once you have all your, your, uh, your you've identified your position that's the best with all these factors, um, you can lay out your cones, your landing pad. Um, make sure you have your emergency equipment like your fire extinguisher. Never know what might happen. And then, then uh, you'll be just about ready to do your final go-no-go no go decisions and begin your operation. In this module, we will be going over flight operations and additional tips. Stay tuned for more. So now we're really getting ready to start our operation and there's something we have to talk about and that's checklists. As you know from your training and your flight review, checklists are a must. Something that I have to bring up as a flight reviewer is we often see candidates show up with a beautiful binder full of all the documents, all their checklists, and then you have to ask yourself, when you're flying and you have your hands on the controller, how are you gonna flip through a binder and reference an emergency checklist? So at Sugu Drones, we highly recommend the use of an arm board. This is the same sort of arm board the pilots would use on their leg or their arm and we have nice convenient size checklists that you, when you're doing an operation by yourself, because you won't always have a visual observer, will be able to actually practically reference this information in an organized manner and still maintain control of your aircraft. We highly recommend the, the arm boards. Now, these checklists will cover all the uh, important pre-takeoff checks you're also going to have your pre-flight uh, briefing, all the factors you're gonna discuss um, with your visual observers and, and any other flight crew you have. Um, and then finally, the, the walk around on the aircraft, make sure you don't forget anything. Um, you can have some of those checklists in your binder, but certainly the emergency procedures, your takeoff and landing, I uh, highly recommend it be on your arm board, readily, easily accessible, and a big plus when you're doing your flight review if you have not yet done that. There's some additional tools you really should consider for advanced operations such as at an airport. And of course, having a two-way radio is very valuable information for you or your visual observer to monitor the radio and understand when aircraft might be moving or approaching on taxiways or anywhere close to your operation. And even if you're not an airport, to know traffic that might be coming through the area, such as low-flying float planes here in Muskoka. 
Of course, a wind anemometer is also a very valuable tool you hear about often. Some more complex things are the spectrum analyzer, definitely a good to have uh, item. And, and finally, I've forgotten what the fourth thing is. Cue the uh, announcer. Rangefinder, which can be purchased at www.sugutools.com. And yes, finally, a rangefinder. Um, measuring the locations uh, to, to buildings, nearby buildings, the heights of nearby buildings, if you're having to uh, work in that corridor above the building. Being able to have an accurate measurement, um, especially if you've filed your Nav Canada uh, operations to a certain height, it's good to check with the rangefinder, distances, buildings, etc. A laser rangefinder can be quite helpful. In the following module, we will discuss flight operations and safe flights. This module will be comprised of usage of checklist, how to use checklist, and when they are needed. In addition to this, we will also go over upper air work modules. This will help you with flying your drone safely, critically, in response to your flight review or your current operations. Stay tuned for more, continue watching, and don't forget to check out www.canadiandronepilots.ca, a site where you can network, connect, and socialize with. Thank you, and please continue watching. Here's a demonstration of a takeoff, a yaw left, yaw right, and then a landing. And remember, always use your checklist. Here's a demonstration of a takeoff, yaw left, yaw right, and a roll. Here's a demonstration of a takeoff and immediate control systems check. Now we will put all these moves together and we will fly the box. Before you fly the box, be sure that your return to home point is set so that if something goes wrong, you don't have a flyaway. Now when we take off and do our control systems check, we will then fly the box, maintaining as much precision control as possible. At a height of about two meters, go from corner to corner to corner of the box very systematically and then return to land. This is an excellent practice and will really fine hone your skills.
Once you have the box mastered and you're comfortable, we'll of course move on to upper level air work, which is basically the same procedures, but at a higher altitude. And when you get good at this, you can just systemically replace the four corners of the box with the waypoints of your operation. Here's a demonstration of flying the box at a little higher altitude. In this module, we will go over a brief checklist demonstration. We will start with our pre-flight checklist briefing complete and then move over to our other checklist items. If you'd like to learn more or purchase any of our checklists and compliancy package, please visit www.sugudrones.com. This module marks a summary and culmination of all air exercises discussed today. Pre-flight briefing checklist complete. Takeoff checklist. Check GPS, remove lens cap, VO ready for takeoff, area clear, remove lens cap, perform takeoff procedure. Taking off. Takeoff. After takeoff checklist. Control surface check, check altitude, check positive rate, check GPS, proceed to cruise altitude. Control systems, check. Check yaw axis, roll left, roll right, pitch forward and back. Cruise check. Battery level. RC communication strength, check GPS, minimum of 12 lock. Battery 50%, comms good, 16 satellites lock. On the first waypoint. Thank you for watching. For further information on emergency checklist and a full scope of checklist, please visit www.sugudrones.com. Our air operational compliance package can be purchased for a small nominal fee. Furthermore, if you're about to do your flight review, we recommend purchasing our compliance package, SOP, and checklist package. A special thanks goes to this video's sponsor, Drone Center, an application you can use for site surveys, document compliance, and remote sensing.